If you made yourself a knitting board according to my instructions, you'll be wanting some projects. This hood may be easily knitted on the make-it-yourself board or any similar setup. Here's how we do it. Set up for double board stocking head using all 26 pegs on both sides of the loom. We'll knit a double stockinette strip 22 inches long and 8 to 9 inches wide. Clamp the boards together so that the pegs oppose one another perfectly. Use enough spacers so that the rows of pegs are 1 and a quarter inches apart. Measuring from center to center. If you haven't made a loom yet, but you have something similar on hand, here's how to tell if yours will work. Use the regular double board stockinette wrap across 15 pegs on both boards. Then measure the yarn that was consumed with that wrap. If it's about 45 inches, you're good to go. We'll cast on, knit 22 inches of double board stockinette, and then instead of binding off, we'll insert a cord into the first and last rows of wraps. We'll fold here, and that will fall at the top of the head on the finished hat. We'll create a seam here that will become the back of the head, so the finished hood will be 11 inches tall. This will fit most women and most teens very well. If people have a lot of hair, you may want to make it a little bit longer to account for the hair. Any number four, otherwise known as worsted weight yarn in the U.S., may be used. For this sample, I combined two. The white yarn is a little bit heavier of a number four than the multicolored yarn, and you can see that makes the fabric a little bit wider. Slight variations are not a problem. So the skinnier part of my hat is about eight and a half inches wide, and it's more like eight and three quarters in the more robust worsted. The yarn requirements are shown on the screen. Of course, it's always good to have a little bit of extra on hand. This is a great way to use up odds and ends. What I did to make sure that my beginning and ending white stripe would be the same size is divided the white yarn that I had on hand into two equal sized balls. If you weigh them on a kitchen scale that's intended for weighing food, you can get quite an accurate division. And between the white and the multicolored yarn, I was able to get a complete hat, whereas I wouldn't have had enough of either one solo. The hat pictured now is truly made with self-striping yarn. This one is made with a vintage yarn in the varying colors normally described as ombre. And as you can see in double stockinette, it makes a different kind of pattern than it does in single stockinette. We're knitting double board stockinette, and every row, including the cast on, is knitted in the same way. Last stitch knitted was the end peg on the front board. We let the yarn emerge from that, cross the board, wrapping the very end peg on the back board, then zigzag across to and fro from board to board until we get to the other end of the loom. Then we'll wrap straight across the end and come back. So by the time we have done this, every single peg on the loom will have its original stitch, if this is a new row, or have been wrapped one time, if this is the cast on row. Then we start knitting bottom loop over top loop. It's my personal preference to always knit the last peg wrapped first, because that anchors everything so it can't get away from you and you can easily knit over the remainder of the row. My personal preference, because I think it makes things easier, is to start by hanging the knotted loop of yarn on the peg that will be the last peg I knit. I then start my wrap by going to the back peg and I will end up by wrapping this peg again. This means that on the first row that I actually knit over, I'll knit two loops over on that particular peg. You don't have to do it my way if you have another preference for ways to start your cast on. However, you do need to use the basic stockinette wrap for the drawstring at the bottom of the hood to work. After wrapping for the cast on, lay an anchor cord across all of the wraps. Push the tails of that cord down through the ends of the loom and knot them together. 
This will help you keep your stitches organized for the first couple rows and give you something to pull on to control them as well. Knit until your piece is 22 inches long. Now we need to knit the cord and to make room for knitting the cord, move the two end stitches on each board over to the third peg on each board. We really only need the first peg to be free, but it's good to have a little space between the area where we're working and the area where stitches are held on the pegs. We'll knit the cord on these two pegs. Cast on by knotting a loop in the end of the yarn you're going to use, hanging that loop on one of these two pegs, then making a figure eight wrap around the other one. Make another complete figure eight knit the bottom loops over the top, and continue to do that for the entire length of the cord. You need 32 inches of cord in all. When you have enough length, transfer one stitch to the peg on the opposite side of the loom and knit a couple of rows on that peg only. This is to create a slender end on our cord, which will be easier to work through the opening. When you have knitted a couple of single stitch rows, Snip the yarn and pull the tail through. Instead of a bind off, we're going to take the skinny end of that cord and run it through the stitches. Thread the yarn tail into a needle and pull the needle all the way up to the cord end. Push the needle through one of the end stitches, lift it off of the loom, then go through the end stitch on the opposite side and keep on alternating until each stitch has been picked up. Then lift the entire piece of knitting off of the loom. Now fold the piece of knitting as shown in the diagram so that the cast on and bound off ends align without twisting the fabric. The dotted line designates the area that we will seam later to finish the back of the hood, but not quite yet. Here's where we ran the cord through the final stitches instead of a bind off. Now run the other end of the same cord through the cast on. At this point, the anchor cord should still be in position. Once we've run through, we can pull it out. It's keeping that first row of wraps organized for us, and so we don't want to pull it out prematurely. All that remains is to seam the center back together. The structure of double knitted fabric allows us to seam invisibly. The very edge of a piece of double knitted fabric appears as a chain right up the edge. If you insert the needle carrying the seaming yarn into one chain stitch and up through the next chain stitch, then cross over to the other piece of fabric and repeat the same operation, the fabric appears continuous. The trick is to use your sewing yarn with a tension that pulls it snug enough that both sides of the fabric touch but are not distorted or shortened. Here we're seaming the back of a hood, but the same technique allows us to join panels to make a big blanket. The completed hood is really warm and incidentally easier on the hairdo than a traditional hat. You can embellish it with a fur pom-pom or a tassel, and both of those are separate movies. I will place links to them in the program notes.